Woman as an Inventor by Matilda Jocelyn Gage. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Avai in October 2018. Woman as an Inventor no assertion in reference to woman is more common than that she possesses no inventive or mechanical genius even the united states census failing to enumerate her among the inventors of the country but while such statements are carelessly or ignorantly made tradition history and experience alike prove her possession of these faculties in the highest degree although woman's scientific education has been grossly neglected yet some of the most important inventions of the world are due to her hon samuel fisher while commissioner of patents said any sketch of american inventions would be imperfect which fails to do justice to the part taken by woman the new york times in an editorial upon woman's inventive genius says the feminine mind is as a rule quicker than the masculine mind takes hints and sees defects which would escape the average man's attention women frequently carry the germs of patents in their head and cause some rude machine to be constructed which serves their purpose if women would fix their minds on inventions it is entirely probable that they would distinguish themselves in this line far more than they have done hitherto End quote. the scientific american testifies of the inventions of women for which they solicit patents that in their practical character and in their adaptation of means to effect a definite purpose they fully equal the same number of inventions made by men ancient tradition accords to woman the invention of those arts most necessary to comfort most conducive to wealth most promotive of civilization man's first needs are food clothing and shelter and to woman tradition assigns their present practical forms isis in egypt minerva in greece suravati in india the mother of the incas in peru and several empresses of china have alike been worshipped because of their inventive genius Diodorus, speaking of the worship paid to olden gods and goddesses, says, The inventors of things useful and profitable to man's well-being were as a reward of their deserts thus honoured by all men with everlasting remembrance. He adds that the gods of Egypt were of two characters, first the supernatural or purely spiritual gods, second most beloved and most worshipped, those human beings who had been of especial benefit to the world and who after death were enrolled among the gods foremost among these secondary gods he places isis to her was attributed the invention of bread-making and the foundation of agriculture previous to her time the egyptians lived upon uncooked roots and herbs she also taught the art of healing and the manufacture of flax and laid the foundations of egyptian literature down to the time of galen many medicines bore the name of isis so famed were the medicines of egypt that the prophet jeremiah mentions them and homer sang their praises the potion nepenthes which lulled sorrow given by helen to telemachus was obtained in egypt by the wife of a trojan hero Isis also invented the art of embalming. Through its means, the Israelites were enabled to keep their oath to Jacob and take his body with them when they fled from Egypt, nearly four hundred years afterward. Athens, a name synonymous with all that is beautiful in art or generous in culture, a city that still holds power over men's hearts, was under the special protection and guidance of the feminine inventor and goddess Minerva, who, as Pallas Athene, was one of the most ancient religious conceptions of the Greeks. Regarded as the inventor of every kind of work usually done by woman, she was equally deemed the originator of agriculture and mechanics, 
the inventor of all tools of man's handicraft of musical instruments and of the arts of war chariots of shipbuilding and the breaking of horses ceres not only gave corn to the greeks but under the name of thesmophoros was revered as the first lawgiver letters attributed to the muses look back to a feminine source for their invention divination that art which ruled the actions of heroes and turned the fate of empires with its sibyls priestesses oracles and books has come down through history as originating with woman to the amazons the javelin shield and battle-axe was attributed even the toils and nets of the hunter are also ascribed to woman but leaving the realm of tradition and half mythical history we still find woman accredited with some of the earliest and most useful inventions that she was the primitive artist is quite universally conceded to her as the one to prepare the food the invention and ornamentation of pottery is ascribed among savage races it is still easy to trace the inception and growth of this art in woman's hands the most ancient chinese writers accord the invention of spinning to yao wife of the fourth emperor and the discovery of silk to shi ling chi wife of the emperor huang ti four thousand years before christ this country was long known as ser or serica the land of silk its later name of china originated from sien chan under which appellation as goddess of silkworms shi ling chi is still worshipped when the word china is spoken it is in perpetual honour and remembrance of this woman inventor the unparalleled duration of chinese civilization and the prosperity of that country are largely due to silk the secret of which was for ages kept from other nations and which formed an export of extraordinary value its weight in gold being paid by roman emperors for a garment the culture of the mulberry the rearing of silkworms and the manufacture of silk in various forms are still the great staple domestic industries of this people to whom cotton was unknown until within the last eight hundred years aristotle was the first european writer to mention silk yet it was not until a thousand years after his time that the secret of its manufacture became known to the west it is now however an article of great commercial value to many nations the worth of its raw material produced in france alone is computed at thirty two million dollars yearly and the profits upon its manufacture at twelve million dollars gauze was the invention of pamphili a woman of cos who shortly after the introduction of silk into europe penelope like unravelled its web remanufacturing it into a transparent fabric known to roman ladies as coa vestis and to modern as coan or gauze one of the most diaphanous fabrics of the ancient world familiarly designated as the woven wind it was yet possessed of sufficient strength to take colours and bear embroidery of silk and gold thread under the forms of velvet crepe gauze satin foulard pongee plush and lace silk largely contributing to the wealth of the world has shaped the policy of states as lace its use dates only from the middle of the eighteenth century no other fabric requires such delicate manipulation upon the white varieties not even every woman can work as the breath itself must possess exquisite purity those who have what is locally termed the haleine grasse that is greasy breath are compelled to confine themselves to the manufacture of the black varieties silk is possessed of the qualities most sought by manufacturers delicacy lustre strength and a capability of taking any colour desired it is the strongest of all fibres exceeding that of hemp or flax by a law of eternal fitness spinners strive for a thread like a woman's hair long fine strong and vibrant as a source of wealth lace equally with silk 
has largely influenced state policy. The value of the finest thread lace when wrought in points is enormous, far exceeding that of precious stones. No other art, it is said, is capable of bringing about such an extraordinary increase in value from a material worth as little as flax in the unwrought state. The early records of this art are lost in the mists of antiquity, but there is no doubt that woman was its originator. At the exposition of woman's work in Florence, a few years since, visitors were greatly interested in a specimen of the magnificent lace known as Puleto di Venezia, Venetian point. Its stitch, lost since the 13th century, has recently been rediscovered by Madame Bessani, a humble workwoman, to whom the Italian Minister of Commerce accorded letters patent, with exclusive control of her discovery for fifteen years. The importance of Madame Bessani's invention to Italy is incalculable, opening to that country an immense source of revenue and political power. Pillow lace making, which brought this elegant addition to the toilet within the reach of all, was the invention of Barbara Utman of Saxony, at a period when that country was on the verge of financial ruin. The art spread with great rapidity, and Belgium soon derived an immense revenue from it, and although three hundred years have since elapsed, lace still continues to be its great source of wealth. Nor has its influence upon other countries been less beneficial. Not only did wealth accrue to England through its introduction there, but a great moral change for the better soon appeared as one of its effects. To Meryl Nisa, best known to English-speaking peoples through Moore's Lights of the Harem as Nur Mahal, is the world indebted for its priceless cashmere shawls, the manufacture of which gives employment to thousands of men and women, and forms one of the principal sources of revenue in India. To her, also, we owe that most exquisite and costly perfume, attar, or more properly, a tear of roses. Her husband, the great conqueror Jerun Zibi, most passionately attached to her, through his love, and for the benefits she had conferred upon her country, caused her name and the title Light of the World to be struck on the coins of India. He built to her memory that fairy temple on the banks of the Jumna known as the Taj Mahal, which travellers vie in describing as all that is most light, graceful, exquisite, and picturesque in architecture. With Kameyo, a woman worker in bronze, the decorations in relief, so much used by Japanese artists, originated. Wood engraving, the pioneer of all other forms of engraving, was the invention of the Kunio children, twin sister and brother, at Ravenna, Italy, in the 13th century. The discovery of cotton as a textile fibre, ascribed in the East to Semiramis, was in America attributed to the mother of the Incas, who taught the Peruvians its manufacture. The kaftan, or Eastern robe of honour, also known as Semiramis's gown, was ascribed to that Eastern heroine, an invention for the purpose of concealing her sex when journeying to meet her husband. The right to wear this garment has for ages belonged only to potentates. It was one of the emblems of exalted rank chosen by Haman, when consulted by Ahasuerus as to the marks of distinction to be shown the man whom the king delighted to honour. The straw industry of the United States owes its origin to Miss Betsy Metcalf, who, in 1798, made the first straw bonnet ever manufactured in this country. Within twelve years thereafter, the state of Massachusetts alone produced half a million dollars' worth of straw goods. That state now produces six million hats and bonnets annually. A great deal of straw is also manufactured in other states. The most remarkable invention of the age, in its industrial, social, and political influence, the cotton gin, owes its origin to a woman, Catherine Littlefield Green, widow of General Green of revolutionary memory, 
with whom the idea originated. The cotton gin heads the list of sixteen remarkable American inventions that have been adopted by the world. After the close of the war, General Green settled in Georgia, where he soon died. The great difficulty of separating the seed from the cotton was at that time the staple subject of conversation among planters. To separate a pound of the black seed from the lint was a day's task for a negro. The white variety, much more valuable, from its greater tenacity, was scarcely at all cultivated. It was the regular custom of the planter's family to unite in this work every evening, and a fortune was prophesied for the person who should construct a machine capable of doing the work. After a conversation of this character between some guests at her house, Mrs. Green conceived the idea of such a machine, and entrusted its construction to the hands of Eli Whitney, then boarding with her, who possessed the usual New England facility in the use of tools. The wooden teeth at first tried not doing their work well. Mr. Whitney wished to abandon the machine altogether, but Mrs. Green, whose faith in ultimate success never wavered, would not consent. She suggested the substitution of wire. Within ten days from the first conception of Mrs. Green's ideas, a small model was completed, so perfect in its construction that all succeeding gins have been based upon it. This invention produced an extraordinary increase in the culture of cotton. Instead of the single pound cleaned by hand, three hundred pounds were now daily separated from the lint at the same cost. Not only did the languishing industries of the South receive a sudden and stable impetus, but every part of the world felt the influence of this woman's idea. It may be asked why Mrs. Green, then a widow, did not take out the patent in her own name, but to have done so would have exposed her to the ridicule and contumely of her friends, and a loss of position in society, which frowned upon any attempt at outside industry for women. Through her second husband, Mr. Miller, she afterward assumed a subordinate interest in it. A very slight investigation proves that patents taken out in some man's name are, in many instances, due to woman. A recent noted instance of this kind is Miss Louise McLaughlin's invention of underglaze painting on pottery. Miss McLaughlin, desiring that all artists should share in its benefits, explained her process to every person who asked her, and even wrote a book giving this information. But a certain man, seeing its value, took out a patent upon it, thus prohibiting even its inventor from using the fruit of her own brains. The burden horseshoe machine, turning out a complete shoe every three seconds, was a woman's invention. At a renewal of the patent in 1871, it was claimed that $32 million had been saved to the public during the 14 years of its use. A third great American invention, the mower and reaper, owes its early perfection to Mrs. Anne Harnd Manning of Plainfield, New Jersey, who, in 1817-1818, to perfected a system for the combined action of teeth and cutters, patented by her husband, William Henry Manning, as a device for the combined action of teeth and cutters, whether in a transverse or revolving direction. Mrs. Manning also made other improvements, of which, not having been patented, she was robbed after her husband's death, by a neighbour whose name appears in the list of patentees upon this machine. Mrs. Manning also invented a clover cleaner, which proved very lucrative to her husband, who took out the patent. Nor was she the only woman whose thought had been turned toward agricultural machines. The name of Elizabeth Smith, also of New Jersey, appears in 1861 among the list of patentees upon an improvement to the mower and reaper, whereby the knives could be adjusted while the machine was in motion. The smallest inventions sometimes prove the most lucrative. A San Francisco lady, inventor of a baby carriage, received $14,000 for her patent. The paper pail, the invention of a Chicago lady, yields a large income. 
the gimlet pointed screw the idea of a little girl has realized millions of dollars to its patentee among recent inventions of importance by women are a spinning machine capable of turning from twelve to forty threads a rotary loom doing three times the work of an ordinary loom a volcanic furnace for smelting ore an improved wood sawing machine a space saving clothes mangle a chain elevator screw crank for steamships a fire escape a device for correct pen holding invaluable in schools a wool feeder and weigher one of the most delicate machines ever invented and of incalculable benefit to every woolen manufacturer a self-fastening button a portable reservoir for use in case of fires a process for burning petroleum in place of wood and coal for steam generating purposes an improvement in spark arresters to be applied to locomotives a danger signal for street crossings on railways a plan for heating cars without fire a lubricating felt for subduing friction the last five all bearing upon railroad travel a rapid change box a marvel of simplicity and convenience invaluable at railway stations and ferries the invention of a girl of sixteen syllable type with adjustable cases and apparatus machine for trimming pamphlets writing machine signal rocket used in the navy deep sea telescope method of deadening sound on elevated railways smoke burner satchel bottom bags bag folding machine etc etc many improvements in sewing machines have been made by women as a device for sewing sails and having cloth quilting attachments the magic ruffler threading a machine when upon a full run an idea scouted by male machinists an adaptation of machines for sewing leather etc this last was the invention of a practical woman machinist who for many years carried on a large harness manufactory in new york city systems for improved drainage for better ventilation for forcing water to great heights and distances a thousand household appliances etc are the fruits of woman's inventive genius but they must be passed by as this paper is designed simply to attract public attention toward a subject upon which much ignorance and misapprehension exist the deep-sea telescope invented by mrs mather and improved by her daughter is a unique and important invention bringing the bottom of the largest ships to view without the expense of raising them into a dry dock by its means wrecks can be inspected obstructions to navigation removed torpedoes successfully sought for and immense sums annually saved to the marine service a machine which for its complicated mechanism and extraordinary ingenuity has attracted much attention both in this country and europe is that for the manufacture of satchel bottom paper bags many men of mechanical genius long directed their attention to this problem without success miss maggie knight to whose genius this machine is due received a compliment from the commissioner of patents upon its entire originality most inventions are but an improvement upon some preceding one she refused fifty thousand dollars for it shortly after taking out her patent miss knight has since invented a machine doing the work of thirty persons in folding bags and herself superintended the erection of the machinery at amherst massachusetts the eureka street sweeper the invention of a hoboken lady owes its origin to the fact of this lady's dress having been spattered with mud by a clumsy machine one day in new york possessed of a mechanical genius she determined to try her hand upon a sweeper that should do its work more perfectly her success was great and her invention a vast improvement upon all its predecessors the remarkable invention of mrs mary e walton for deadening the noise of elevated railroads has occasioned much comment edison and other inventors had for six months unsuccessfully striven to accomplish this end 
when mrs walton brought forward a device which was at once adopted by the metropolitan and other elevated railways the benefit to human health and life likely to accrue from this invention can scarcely be realized the evil effects of persistent noise upon the human system are very great and an invention tending to lessen its force confers a benefit upon mankind a prominent physician says we see very little of the gentle decline of old age in new york city the constant din of travel and traffic born for a time without evidence of injury suddenly shows itself in a shattered nervous system and imminence of dissolution since her noise deadener mrs walton has taken out both in this country and england a patent for a smoke burner that she considers much more valuable by this device all smoke from a fire furnace or locomotive is consumed as also the dust caused by railway trains and the offensive unhealthful odors emitted from factories gas work etc when in england mrs walton received the congratulations of british officials for it as one of the greatest inventions of the age while passing by woman's discovery in science where the names of hypatia maria agnesi and caroline herschel shine mention must still be made of the aquarium the invention of madame jeannette power one of the most eminent naturalists of the century it was used by her in making curious scientific discoveries the value of the aquarium to marine zoology is incalculable not only can rare species from the indian arctic and pacific oceans be brought into close comparison but the subject of embryology can be studied and the great darwinian problems of evolution and permanence of type are likely to be solved by its instrumentality medicine even in modern times owes much to woman it was to her knowledge of this art that woman's persecution for witchcraft in the middle ages was largely due through madame de coudray's invention of the mannequin a knowledge of physiology has been much more widely diffused than would otherwise have been possible many delicate and important surgical instruments owe their origin to woman as also the adaptation of wax for recording medical observations dr hunter was indebted for the illustrations of his greatest work to the observations of a woman preserved in wax chemistry offers an infinite resource to the inventor in a field whose exploration has scarcely begun a prussian governess recently invented a new fulminate for needle gun cartridges and the government is experimenting with it with a view to its purchase from this lucrative field woman is largely debarred through that prejudice and injustice which still deprives her of full opportunities for scientific education but among woman inventors the name of the celebrated sculptor harriet hosmer must not be passed by miss hosmer has succeeded in producing marble from limestone closely simulating the finest antique varieties this process has long been unsuccessfully sought by the italian government but her most valuable invention is that of the permanent magnet as a motive power scientific men and practical machinists deem this one of the most important inventions of the century and its influence upon the world as likely to be far-reaching and extraordinary no such power was known to inhere in the permanent magnet until miss hosmer's discovery to which she gave fifteen years of study and experiment the national value of patents and the relation of invention to civilization are subjects that receive marked attention both in england and the united states a paper upon the latter topic read in london in eighteen eighty one before the society of engineers forcibly represented the loss sustained by the nation through the obstacles placed in the way of inventors upon whose genius this paper claimed england was dependent for holding her place among the nations the inventions of a nation are closely connected with the freedom of its people during the reign of george the third the average yearly number of patents taken out in great britain was but fourteen 
at present the average is five thousand while in the united states it is eighteen thousand this difference is directly traceable to the progress of freedom and education while as has been shown many of the world's most important inventions are due to woman the proportion of feminine inventors is much less than of masculine which arises from the fact that woman does not possess the same amount of freedom as man restricted in education industrial opportunities and political power this is one of many instances where her degradation reacts injuriously upon the race the majority of inventions are the result of much consideration and self-reliant thought inventors must not only possess full freedom to exercise their powers but there must also be a certain welcome and protection to their ideas deprived as woman is of political power she has to face contempt of her sex open and covert scorn of womanhood depreciatory allusions to her intellectual powers all tending to hamper the expression of her inventive genius nor is woman by law recognized as possessing full right to the use and control of her own powers in not a single state of the union is a married woman held to possess a right to her earnings within the family and in not one half of them has she a right to their control in business entered upon outside of the household should such a woman be successful in obtaining a patent what then would she be free to do as she pleased with it not at all she would hold no right title or power over this work of her own brain she would possess no legal right to contract or to license any one to use her invention neither should her right be infringed could she sue the offender her husband could take out the patent in his own name sell her invention for his own sole benefit give it away if he so chose or refrain from using it and for all this she would have no remedy it is scarcely thirty years since the first state protected a married woman in the use of her own brain property under these conditions legally incapable of holding property and trained as she has been to seclusion dependence and abeyance of thought that woman has not been an inventor to an equal extent with man is not so much a subject of surprise as that she should have invented at all while every invention however small develops new industries provides work for a multitude of people increases commercial activity adds to the revenues of the world and renders life more desirable great inventions broaden the boundaries of human thought bring about social religious and political changes hurrying mankind on to a new civilization lecky forcibly shows the loss to the world from the celibacy and martyrdom of the best human element in the past no less is the darkness of the world kept more dense and its civilization retarded by all forms of thought customs of society or systems of law which prevent the full development and exercise of a woman's inventive powers matilda jostlin gage End of Woman as an Inventor by Matilda Jocelyn Gage From the North American Review, Volume 136, 1883